Hello and welcome back. And this video will be mostly about me doing the benchmark between the Blender 3.0 CPU mode and Blender 3.1 Alpha using the Metal, including GPU and GPU and CPU rendering. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use the Blender 3.0, as you can see, and we will be rendering uh, as system allows only in the CPU version of the cycles. However, in the Blender, I will be uh, testing two ways of rendering with the Metal, with just M1 Pro GPU and both GPU and um, CPU. So the results are, will be a little bit different and I will showcase where you can get gains just from rendering GPU or both from GPU and CPU. And uh, without further ado, uh, let's check out the numbers and discuss what's what. So the first one will be the BMW scene, which is uh, reasonably uh, kind of like at this point a little bit old and it doesn't utilize all the new fancy things. But anyway, uh, what we are seeing is a full HD uh, divided by two resolution. Effectively, it's 960 by uh, 540. And as you can see, we are going to use the system of indicating how much CPU and GPU is being utilized, as in 100% of CPU usage means one full core utilization. So the Blender 3.0 in the CPU mode uses 780% uh, of CPU and it finished in 4 minutes 11 seconds and it used 147 megabytes of system memory. Whereas the 3.A in CPU and GPU um, it was utilizing 6 cores and almost fully the GPU and it finished in 1 minute 14 seconds utilizing 118 megabytes of memory which basically calculation done 3.4 times faster using just GPU uh, actually utilizes less than 5% CPU cores out of like 800% and it used 99.5% of the GPU and it finished in 1 minute 22 seconds and it used almost um, 1400 megabytes so basically it is a little bit slower than just using uh, i mean uh, than using both cpu and gpu so it's 3.06 times faster next one will be the classroom and again it's 300 max samples full hd and in 3.0 it was using 760% of the CPU and it finished in 9 minutes 25 seconds using uh, 637 megabytes of memory. So uh, in 3.a using both CPU and GPU uh, utilizing about uh, 6 full cores and 97% of GPU we finished at 3 minutes 8 seconds um, with the 605 megabytes of memory which is exactly 3 times faster. Whereas using only GPU, we were utilizing less than 3% of the CPU and about 99.3% of GPU and finished in 3 minutes 38 seconds and using 2102 megabytes of memory, roughly about 2.6 times faster. So again, as we can see, using both CPU and GPU at the same time in the scene like classroom uh, gets you a little bit of a speed Next scene is Barbershop and just so you know the default setting for Barbershop is 800 samples and I rendered it at 100 samples because uh, it would take like a huge amount of time just to render one scene. I don't think it's worth it just to wait there for half an hour or something just to see how much gains we can get. So yeah, again, uh, I render it 100 samples instead of the default 800 samples. So 3.0, uh, it finished in 5 minutes 12 seconds, was utilizing 770% CPU and was using uh, 2720 megabytes of memory. 3.A, both CPU and GPU managed to do it 2.24 times faster, utilizing about 600% uh, of CPU and 94% of GPU, I'm sorry, and finished in 2 minutes 19 seconds. 
So basically, as you can see, using both CPU and GPU, at least on my 14 MacBook Pro, it, it actually uses not all of the CPU, it uh, uses about six cores. I suppose it's six performance cores and the efficiency cores do not really take part into the, you know, w within the rendering when we're using both GPU and CPU. And using just GPU, we were using under 3% of the CPU and 98.5% of GPU. I finished in two and a half minutes uh, using 4,579 uh, megabytes of memory and it was 2.08 times faster. So again, using both CPU and GPU in this one uh, gets you a little bit of a speed boost. Next scene is spring and is actually more a kind of like fresh approach because it uses, um, first of all, it uses just 300 samples compared to 800 samples in the barbershop. But after that, it actually uses the denoising so yeah this this saves a lot of time so the default setup is 1002 by 500 and 200 percent of the resolution which basically computes to uh, 2004 by 1000 pixels so 3.0 it finished in 7 minutes 48 seconds and used uh, more, uh, just about 800 uh, 8 gigs of memory and utilizing as per usual the 770% of CPU. Now, interestingly enough, the scene was loading for about 24 seconds. So actual rendering time was a little bit lower than that, but I will be just, you know, um, making the difference, computing the difference using the scene load times as well. So 3.8 using CPU and GPU was 2.34 times faster was using as per usual six cores and 94.5% of the GPU and finished in three minutes and 20 seconds using um, about five gigabytes of memory. The 3.A using just GPU was 1.89 times faster. So again, we're losing a little bit of a performance there, not utilizing the CPU. And it was utilizing just under 3% of the CPU and the GPU was at full blast at 98% and finished in four minutes and eight seconds utilizing uh, just under eight gigs of memory. So the junk shop is actually a rather curious situation because it uses just 50 samples and then it uses the denoising and it's 2K by 1K resolution. And uh, the scene itself loads in 11 seconds on 3.0 and it finishes in 1 minute 31 seconds using 5 gigs of memory. Now on 3.1a using CPU and GPU it uses uh, it's uh, 1.75 times faster however for whatever reason uh, first of all it loads scene a little bit faster in 9 seconds but it underutilizes the CPU just using just about five cores on full blast and 95% of GPU. Whereas the just GPU mode of this is using 96% of GPU, loads the scene in eight seconds and actually finishes faster in 42 seconds using six and a half gigs of memory. And as you can see, the 3.8 CPU and GPU is 1.7 times faster. And the just GPU is two 0.17 times faster and there was it was a surprising result so I had to recheck and re-render and yes using just GPU is faster than using both it's one of those situations when I was personally a little bit surprised and had to re-render a couple of times but um, it doesn't lie the results are true so just using GPU in junk shop is really faster Okay, and the final scene is the party tag, which is basically just utilizing the EV. It doesn't uh, have the ray tracing capabilities. It's just, you know, the EV render engine. So anyway, I was uh, interested in whether it's faster or not using the 3.1A with the new metal, whether it makes any difference. And I don't think it does. It's just the optimization of 3.1A 3 .1 in general. But the point is, 
The 3.0 finished in 10.3 seconds using about 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, yes, and 3.1a was 9.7 seconds uh, using about 3 or 200 megabytes of memory less. So basically about 6% faster. It was, by the way, utilizing ambient occlusion the screen space uh, reflections, blue, motion blur, all the cool stuff that a year ago was really, really slow on Macs. And right now I'm just, you know, happy to say that everything works rather fast. So as closing thoughts, I just wanted to showcase that I downloaded the Blender 3.1.0 uh, like 10 minutes ago. I mean, 10 minutes ago, before I started recording the benchmarks, I mean. And uh, the interesting part is that if we go to the, oops, if we go to the system, enable everything, and we go to the cycles, experimental GPU compute, and if we now go to render it, it will no longer crash. So it took them a day or so uh, to fix the crashes that were appearing while we were developing our you know shaders and whatnot so yeah uh, this is really good because right now we can you know tweak the metallic tweak the roughness uh yet to do some some kind of like a bevel shader or whatnot and we can basically start finally uh, building our materials using the actual cycles gpu and cpu while we are in our viewport so this is great news However, uh, the previous scenes were utilizing kind of like medium and basic shaders. I really wanted to push shaders a little bit further, like medium, maybe a little bit harder than medium. So kind of like noise-based, ambient seclusion, bevel, all this kind of stuff. But I will talk about this in further videos. So if you're interested in rendering, shading, uh, you know, building your own procedural materials, all that kind of cool stuff. As you can see, finally, we can do it on Mac and I will be making more videos about that. So stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. If you have some ideas, just comment. And yeah, uh, hopefully you have a nice day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.